According to director Takashi Yamazaki, his Godzilla would remain close to the themes of Ishiro Honda's original film, stating, I love the original Godzilla, and I felt I should stay true to that spirit, addressing the issues of war and nuclear weapons. So this movie absolutely blew my mind, and I gotta say, this is the greatest Godzilla movie I have ever seen. And I'm gonna share with you three reasons why I think this movie is the best Godzilla movie ever made. The first reason is the story and the characters in this movie. The movie mainly focuses on a fighter pilot by the name of Kochi. He ends up pretty much fleeing from battle. This is right at the end of World War II in Japan. And you know, he's just seen the horrors of war and he doesn't want to do it anymore. And that's when Godzilla shows up. Takoshi Godzilla represents God, punishing him for deserting his army, deserting his duty, the dishonor that comes from not only fleeing from war and letting other people die, but the dishonor that he's gonna be facing from his family. Just the story of a man trying to regain his honor, just the layers to his character, the layers to the story of just how war impacted him, but how Godzilla impacted him. He just doesn't believe that he can be happy. He doesn't feel like he can enjoy life. He encounters this woman named Noriko, and she has a baby with her, and he doesn't deem himself worthy to even be in a relationship. Like, he likes her. Powerful moments in the movie that really showed him that he has the right to live. Second reason, Godzilla in this movie was amazing. The way Godzilla was treated in the original, Godzilla is viewed as more of a deity as well, not just something to cause havoc. There was a very specific reason, a very specific symbolism to Godzilla, and that was showcased very, very well in this movie. They pretty much renovated Godzilla. All the great things about Godzilla, they just turn it up to 11. My favorite part about Godzilla that they did in this movie is when he's about to emit his radiation. The spikes in his back actually pop out, which gives it even more terror and more power and just shows you just how how powerful Godzilla really is. It's just freaking crazy. And the last reason is the powerful emotions in this movie. The main character wasn't very alive in this movie and it took pretty much an act of God to get him to pay attention. And his character development from the very beginning to the very end was perfect. A completely different guy by the time the end rolls around. And just the confidence and the life that has been breathed back into him. It was the very end, Kochi realized what his purpose in life was. And it was to take out Godzilla by any means necessary. I don't see many characters that are written this well nowadays. And I gotta say, filmmakers pay attention to how Kochi's character is written because whoever the writers were for this movie knew exactly what they were doing. They knew how to hit the audience with all the feels, all the emotions. I mean, it was just incredible how this movie made you feel towards the main characters. Do not miss the message of this movie. Godzilla may take away a lot of the spotlight in this movie, but there's so much more to this movie that makes it a masterpiece. So see Godzilla minus one as soon as you possibly can because it is one of the greatest movies that I've seen in a very, very long time. So for Godzilla minus one, I'm gonna give it an eight and a half out of 10 mud flaps. And remember, leave me a thumbs up and drop in the comments below which Godzilla is your favorite. See you next time.